you to do. Your daughters need less Bieber and more Bible. Put away the Bieber, pick up the Bible. That's what your daughters need. Tear down the Bieber posters, open up that Bible. Dust off that Bible, tear down the Bieber posters. That's the message for tonight. Less Bieber, more Bible. You need to raise up your daughters in the ways of the Lord now while they're 8, 9, 10 years old. Because there are going to be teenagers going off into high school. There's going to reach a point where it'll be too late for your daughters. We see people, we see people that'll uh, dress up their little toddlers like prostitutes. You got, they'll have little uh, prostitutes walking around, little, little tots walking around looking like prostitutes, little prostitutes walking around and the parents think it's perfectly fine. Because you want to be seen by Bieber, you want to impress boys, this is not what you should be teaching your daughter. The Bible says that a godly woman dresses with modest apparel. The Bible tells us what, what is good and what is holy and righteous. If you want to know what a woman should be like, what God wants of a woman, read Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 will give you a good description of what God wants from a woman. And a godly woman will dress with modest apparel, not, not uh, trying to impress the world with outward adornment, but with a gentle and, and contrite spirit. And the same with boys. These boys that will be around your daughter soon, I don't want them watching these Justin Bieber videos with a bunch of bikini-clad girls in it and then getting all excited when you let your daughter wear a bikini to the pool party and then they start gyrating behind your daughter like Justin gyrates behind Nicki Minaj in his video. Do you think that would be perfectly fine? If some teenage boy came up behind your daughter and started doing sexually explicit things behind your daughter's back while she's wearing a bikini, you'd smack that kid across the face. But you take your daughters to a, a Justin Bieber concert and give him money to make more of these videos with their sexually explicit content in it. So folks, let everyone who names the name of Christ flee from iniquity. That's what the Bible says. If you claim to be a Christian, you better be living holy. If you claim to be a Christian, you better be fleeing from sin. The Bible says the Lord knows those who are His let all those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So the Bible tells us that the Lord knows those who are His. And let all those who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That means that if you claim to be a Christian, you need to be fleeing from iniquity, fleeing from sin. And I don't think Justin Bieber is doing a very good job of fleeing from sin lately. I think all the cares of the world, the craving of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boast, the, the, the pride of life, I think it's starting to get to him. It's starting to tear him down. And I think he's looking more and more like the world and less and less like a Christian. The Bible says that they claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. Now lately, and I, and I believe he was brought up in a good Christian home. I believe he started out as a Christian, but you look at what's going on in his life lately. He claims to be a Christian, and you've got pictures of him smoking, smoking dope. You've got pictures of him drinking booze. You've got videos of him gyrating around with, with women in bikinis. You've got him making men lust after young women. You've got young women going crazy over young boys. These are not the fruits of the Spirit. This is not someone who is fleeing from sexual immorality. He's running to it. He's making videos of it. It's one thing to indulge in sexual immorality, but to make money off it, to make videos promoting it, folks, I think, 
that Justin Bieber is starting slowly to walk down that wrong road and I don't want him to drag your little daughters with him. I do not want your daughters being dragged down the road that the music industry is dragging Justin Bieber down. Amen. We got to do something. We got to do something about uh, these moms taking all these little girls in to see Justin. He's starting to He's starting to be more and more like the world. He's teaming up with Kanye West, Ludacris, and Nicki Minaj. What fellowship does darkness have with light? I think Justin Bieber started out as light. He started out as, as, a, uh, as a Christian, full of light, but he's no longer letting his little light shine. He's giving in to all the temptations. Just like the seed that fell among the rocky soil and the seed that fell among the thorny soil. And it was choked out by the cares of the world and the riches and the pleasures of the world. And it no, he no longer resisted temptation. In 1 John 5, 3, it says, For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. Now I praise God that I was never... Never had as many temptations in my teenage years as Justin Bieber has had thrown at him. Praise God. Praise God that I, I, would, I never in my life will have to face the money, the fame, and the women that that little kid has had thrown at him in a matter of a couple of years. But it is still his requirement to fight those temptations. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. And when you are tempted, He will always provide a means of escape. That means that no amount of temptation can be thrown at you that you cannot resist. And the Bible says, to whom much is given, much will be required. Now I'll admit, much has been given to Justin Bieber. He's a talented young kid. He's been given talents by God. He's got talents to play drums. He's got talents to sing talents to dance. He's a talented young guy. But the Bible says to whom much is given, much will be demanded. So look at this. Look at the opportunities that he's been given. Millions of people watching his videos, buying his music, 20,000 people a night coming to his concert. And is he using that opportunity solely for the glory of God to bring people into the kingdom? to tell people to flee from sin and trust in Christ? Or is he just up there doing a bunch of silly, frivolous dancing, grabbing his crotch more times than Michael Jackson? And I've seen videos of the kid lately. The kid's grabbing his crotch more than Michael Jackson and all of Major League Baseball combined. And the kid's grabbing more junk than the trash man on pickup day. Grabbing his little white junk over and over again for your daughters to see. This is wrong. You need to flee from sexual immorality, even the appearance of sexual immorality. That's what you need to do. So folks, teach your children. Teach your children that when temptations come along, money, money, uh, power, prestige, fame, sexual temptations when they come along. Don't be like Justin who's starting to give in to each and every one of those temptations. Be like a man or a woman of God and flee. Flee from those sins. Flee from sexual immorality. Flee from booze. Flee from pot. Flee from having tattoos put on your body every 10 days. Flee from teaming up with wicked people of the likes of Nicki Minaj and Ludacris and Kanye West. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I command? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said that anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. I think that's starting to describe Justin Bieber. I think he, he was a Christian. I think he was raised in a Christian household. And he put his hand to the plow of Christianity. And he was following God. But then he looked back. Oh, the world was behind him calling out to him. Come here, Justin. Look at the money. Look at the fame. Look at the women. 
Look at all the things we'll throw at you. And he, and he put his hand to the plow, but then he looked back. He looked back, he took his hand off the plow, and he walked away. He's walking away. He's like a prodigal son. Like a prodigal son getting his inheritance and going into a foreign land. Going into a foreign land. Going into a foreign land to live, live a, a debased life. And I pray that he'll be like that prodigal son who comes back. I pray that Justin Bieber will be like that prodigal son who comes to his senses and comes back to his father. That's what I want Justin to do. I want Justin to say enough is enough. Enough is enough of the tattoos. Enough is enough of the drunkenness. Enough is enough of the, of the scantily clad women in my video. Enough is enough of the sexually explicit dancing. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what I want Justin to tell himself. That's what I want him to tell your little nine-year-old daughters. Because I know this seems innocent. This is just where it starts. I know this seems innocent. And a couple of years ago, I would have agreed. I, I would have agreed that a couple of years ago, a Justin Bieber concert would have been an innocent place to take a child. But no longer. Not when you see his videos. Not when you hear his lyrics. Not when you see the tattoos and the booze and the drugs he's getting into. I want I want Justin Bieber to stand up to Kanye West and tell him tell him I'm done with you Kanye I'm done with you Minaj until you repent of your sins and come to Christ I will I will no longer collaborate with ludicrous Minaj and Kanye West that's what I want Justin Bieber to do I think I think that I think that Christian kid is still inside him I think that good Christian kid is still down there somewhere inside Justin Bieber and I want it to come back. And I want him to point your daughters to the cross. I want Justin Bieber to point your little nine-year-old daughters to the cross of Jesus Christ. And quit pointing them to tattoos and booze and drugs and sex. I want him to stop doing that. He needs to come back. So the Bible says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what you need to do. You need to make a decision. Because friendship with the world is enmity with God, folks. Every day, Justin Bieber is becoming more and more a friend of the world. Every day, he becomes more and more a friend of the world and more and more an enemy of God. I don't want him to be dragging your nine-year-old daughters down with him. The Bible says to raise up a child in the way they should go, and when they get old, they shall not depart from it. All right, so I'm going to take advice from a non-Christian on how to witness to people. Now, uh, let's see, Psalm 1. Let's look at Psalm 1. What does that say? And, and Peter, Psalm 1. And, and first Peter says to show people generous and respect when telling them the reason for your uh, When they ask, when they ask. Nobody's come up and asked me for a reason uh, for the faithful... For, uh, you're reading, hold on. You're reading it in context. It's not supposed Thank to. Thank you. Yes, I know I'm reading it in context. Thank you. Like you that's not the way you're supposed to understand. I'm it. not supposed to read it in context. Is that what you're saying? No, you're not supposed to read it in a way of your own thinking. It's supposed to be in God's way of thinking. Hold on. Let me go to Psalm I'm one. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to say that I myself am a Christian and I believe in the faith and everything. I drum for a church. I believe in it and everything. But I don't. I don't agree with the way I'm promoting it this way. I agree with. I agree with promoting it like face to face. All right. Let's see what Psalm. Wait, wait. Let's tell the, the non-Christian. Psalm one, one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So Psalm 1.1 1, 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You're a non-Christian person telling me, telling me how to witness to people and how to win people to Christ. I'll listen to what Psalm 1.1 1, 1 says, and it says that I'll be blessed if I don't take the counsel from the ungodly and from sinners. Now Jesus said, Go into all the nations and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's what I'm doing. And Jesus said to his disciples, What you have heard whispered in the ear, proclaim from the rooftop. And that is what I'm doing. The book of Isaiah says, Cry aloud, spare not, 
lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. And that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you Bible verse after Bible verse justifying what I'm doing. Yes. You're doing a great job. I admire your work, but um but always a but. Just got just God bless. That's all. I have to say. Well, okay. What what would you say is wrong with doing this? I want to hear your advice. Are you the drummer? Are you, were you the one who was saying you're the drummer? Hey, 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 I'm okay. Hey, we're leaving, but I just want to know, know that I love you and I'm looking out for you. Please. Right. Your I want you to share your faith. I want you, if you if you are truly a Christian, I want you to share your faith. No, I don't know what you're gonna say. I'm gonna say uh, no, I'm gonna say I'm. Hey, I'm a Christian. I, you know, I am. I'm, All right. Hold on. Let me wipe. Clean up. Don't be filthy. We're, we're not just right. you don't have to push anything. It's already pushed. Hey, I, I'm a Christian too. And I believe in God, but sorry if any of you are offended. But I'm a Christian too. I love all of you, and I love him too. All right. All right. All right. Share your faith. Now be now be bold and share your faith with friends in whatever way you want to do it. If you all right. If you guys want to hand out, if you guys want to hand out, my faith this guy, but he doesn't like it. But I do it anyway. Well, okay, fine. It doesn't. It's not your job to save him. That's the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, "Just go into all the nations and preach the gospel to every creature." If he wants to be hard-hearted and not come to Christ, that's his doing. But God told the prophet Ezekiel, hold on guys, God told the prophet Ezekiel, when I say unto the wicked that thou shalt surely die, and you, Ezekiel, give us some not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked to save his life, then that man shall surely die for his sins, but his blood I will require at your hands. So your blood is not on this guy's hands anymore. When this guy gets cast into hell because he refused to listen to, he refused to come to Christ, his blood will be upon his own hands, not upon yours. If you have shared your faith, then your hands are clean. His blood will be upon his own hands.